a little bit about lines and planes. So for example, we'd like to describe the line through two points, 2, 3, 1, and minus 5, 7, 4. Let's call that P and Q. And we'd like to do, do that using vectors and then also see what it is explicitly in coordinates and then talk about what's called the symmetric equations of a line, which is a bit different from what we had seen in the linear algebra case. So we've got P and we've got Q. We want to create a vector that talks about the direction that line goes in. Well, that's going to be the vector PQ. So let's call that V. And then the other data that we'd like to have for a plane, the easiest, or for a line, the easiest data to be given is um, all in terms of vectors, and that is if we have a vector that's based at the origin that describes a point on the line, well, hey, we have that. We can promote P to be a vector. We can always take a point and we can create it to be a vector. Then we can use this formula that the way the book says it is start with that vector, that's our base point, and then if I take that and I add a multiple of v, I'm going to be going along the line. Because like here's p, here's p plus v, p plus 2v is up here, p minus v would be down here. And so we just take any number t and add a mul that multiple of v to p. t you often think of as time. You can think of this as like a bug walking or, or flying through space along a straight line. Starting at time t equals 0 to p. Gets here at time 1, because then that's p plus v, which is q and then going on, and in the past, it was back here. Okay, so PQ here, which is gonna be our V vector, is just Q minus P, and so that's minus seven, four, three. And so this is gonna be the vector, oh, I guess, let's use angle brackets to go with the book's notation. So this is just gonna be two, three, one, plus T times minus seven, four, three. And we could just combine it all into do actually do the addition, although it's not essential to do that really a lot of the time. And so that's it is as a vector function, a variable vector. So this is what corresponds to what in the linear algebra uh, notes were um, the a parametric solution of equation often shows up in exactly this form. Here we didn't have this as solutions of equations; it was pure geometry information. But it's the same kind of form. We would have written it as a column vector, but here it's just it's the same thing. And so if we want to think of this as giving the position of a particle as a function of time, which is a really good way to think about it, we can just separate those out and say, OK, for a particular time, I can tell you the x, y, and z coordinates of this bug flying through space in this particularly simple way. Now, this is a parameterized and hence very explicit form of the equations. If I tell you t, you can create points, a point, x, y, and z, add to your heart's content. But it's a little harder. It's not very hard, but it's a little harder to answer questions like, if I have the point 5, 9, 20, is that on the line? And there's a way to, to go from this explicit form to an implicit form, which is a little easier. And that is, to isolate t and see what, what that gives you. So t from this, it tells us that's x minus 2 over minus 7. But from this equation, it tells us that t is also equal to y minus 3 over 4. And this equation says t is also equal to z minus 1 over 3. Now, there's two uses for that. One is, suppose I have the x, y, and z coordinates for, for a point, and it is on the line, and I wanted to figure out when the bug gets there using this particular way of crawling or flying along a line. That would tell me the t, and it would be three different ways to calculate the same t. But it's mo more useful, usually, to figure out for an arbitrary random point x, y, z, whether it's on the line at all. If I get different numbers for these three things, it can't possibly be on the line. But if I get the same number, it is going to be on the line, and it also tells me the t value. So that's called the symmetric equations for a line. If I just drop the t, because often I'm not that interested in how to get to somewhere. 
I just want to know, is it on that the set of points? So this drops the parameterization, this extra data of how to draw the line. The T is this extra data. And it just gives me equations that, that give me the line. Now, look at this. There's two equal signs. So it looks like there's two equations. But some people could, th could say, well, wait, it's really three equations. Because it's this equals this, this equals this, and this equals this. And that would be weird. If it was three honest-to-God independent equations in three unknowns, it should determine a point. But, of course, it's not independent equations. The fact that this equals this is a consequence of this equals this and this equals this. So it's really just two independent equations. You start with three variables, you cut it down with two equations, there should just be one parameter left, and you should get a line. Okay. Let's check the time. Okay, so that's what we did there was we went from, from the geometry to the algebra in two different ways, parameterized form of the algebra, actually three different ways, sort of vector parameterized, three different scalar parameterized, and then the, imp the, um, the more implicit form, the symmetric equations, let me write that up. They're called symmetric because they kind of just talk about x, y, and z fairly symmetrically. Oh, and notice, what's the shortcut? This number is this guy, this number is this guy, the one is this guy, and the bottoms are just the coefficients of, of v. So these are the, the coordinates of p, these are the components of v. So it's just a very simple procedure. And these were the implicit way that are more suited to testing a random point, not as suited to generating the line, generating a lot of points on the line from scratch. Now, we don't always want to go just from geometry to algebra. We might want to go the other way. Suppose I have a line described by these equations, this vector equation. This says, for any t, I create some point in space. We can see that it's of this form of a constant vector plus t times some other fixed vector. So it's going to have this shape of starting at a fixed point, 5, 3, 7, and going off in the direction of the vector, 4 minus 2 minus 5. So that's like my p, and that's my v. Um, and so that's the, it's going to be a line, that parameterized form of a line. And then we can take advantage of the fact that it was really easy to read off this information, especially this is nice information. So, for example, if I want to create a line parallel to, let's say, let's call this line L, which is described by that. Let's say I'll map my new line is maybe L prime. But going through uh, the point 2, 1, 0, that's quite easy because I know that this talks about the direction information. That's coming from these guys, the things in front of the T, the variable stuff. And I just need to substitute this guy for the P. And so I'm just going to get, let's say, R of T for L prime is 2 plus 4T, 1 minus 2T, and then just minus 5T. There's no, nothing with the 0. Okay, and that's an angle bracket to make it a vector. And so that's a very important thing you've got to, to do. There's, there's, I'm trying to highlight two translation procedures. One is implicit versus explicit, going back and forth there, implicit or parameterized, in other words. And then the other is going from geometry to algebra or algebra to geometry. Okay. I'm not going to do every single case of, 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 of all of that. But if you ever feel like, OK, I kind of get the idea. If I start from the geometry, here's the algebra, you want to think about, can I go backwards? The great thing about this section is that almost everything requires very little computation. And so if you do know, for example, how to go from geometry to algebra of a line, we didn't have to do any weird computations that would be hard to undo. We just put those, we just put these numbers from the geometry into the algebra. Or going from the algebra into the geometry, there's no modification. For some things, it's much more subtle. But for here, it's actually pretty easy. So let me just talk a little bit about planes, too. Um, the key thing with a plane is that the direction information, we start out with a point P, maybe that the plane is through, but the direction information, this is a little bit familiar from what I was talking about with the cross product, 
is not a vector along the plane because that doesn't do it. If you have a vector like this, I could still tilt the plane. I need two vectors to determine a plane, which is often how we do it, but it's not the most efficient way. Now that we've allowed ourselves to talk about perpendicularity, though, we can take a vector n and choose it to specifically not be in the plane, in fact, to be perpendicular to the plane. And so this is the preferred geometric data that we're going to be wanting to see to get a plane. So a lot of the problems are going to be of the form, here's some different geometric data, like three points. How, those should determine a plane as long as they're not all collinear. How would we get the geometric data out of that? Well, here, you can see examples in the book of this. Here, the trick is take those two separation vectors and then take their cross product. Boom, we've got a normal vector. Okay. I want to go back to the basic idea of the connection between geometry and algebra, though. If you've got this preferred data, how do you get the algebra? Well, I want to get an equation. And here, it's, it turns out to be easier to get the implicit equation or using the normal vector, it turns out to be easier to get the implicit equation. So I've got a random point, Q. It may or may not be on the plane, and I want to know if it is. I'm going to draw it as if it is, because it's going to be the, the sort of the more interesting case. Well, that means that this vector has got to be perpendicular to this normal vector. And I can do that with a dot product. Okay. So n dotted PQ should be 0. That's the fundamental translation from geometry to algebra. And then I just need to make everything explicit. If this is x naught, y naught, z naught, the subscripts to make it a fixed vector. Let me check my time. Now we're good. And if n, just for convenience, a, b, c, for example. And if q, now that's a variable vector. We're just going to say x, y, z. And it's specifically without subscripts, because this could be anything that we're putting in. Then I'm going to have a, b, c. I guess those angle brackets if we want to be careful, dotted with the differences in the coordinates equals zero. That's going to be essentially my equation for a plane. And if I just want to write that in a way that's comprehensible to somebody who doesn't understand dot products or never seen them before, I just evaluate that dot product. It's a x minus x naught plus b y minus y naught plus c z minus c naught equals zero. And it's often good to write it in the usual way. I'm going to move everything that's a constant over. It's understood that in this, that this given data, these six numbers are, are fixed and given. And it's only x, y, and z that are, there, that are variable. And often, it's not that important to remember where this came from. It's just we just call it d. And that's somewhat familiar from the linear algebra case, that one equation, one linear equation and three unknowns should give us a plane. And here, we get a nice, for the first time, we get a nice geometric interpretation of what those coefficients might be. So that's going from geometry to algebra. What about algebra to geometry? Suppose I just give you, I say, 3x plus 2y minus z equals 5. We know from our linear algebra experience that that should define a plane. And, but then like sketching it or getting a feel for what that plane is has been a little bit tricky. Well, one of the things we now can say is that if I want to focus on the normal vector, I can just read that off. Its coefficients are just, its components are just the coefficients of this equation. So one way to get a handle on how that plane sits in space is it's normal to this factor 3, 2, minus 1. So for example, suppose I wanted to get a line perpendicular. Suppose I want L to be perpendicular to this plane and go through 5, 7, 11. Well, that was the normal vector to the plane, but now it's going to be the V vector for my line. And I could do R of T is 5 plus 3T, because that's now turned into the V vector. 7 plus 2t, and 11 minus t. Got to stop there, but that's some pretty good examples.